How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jeff Benjamin with your co-host, Sebastian Pays. This is Let's Talk Jailbreak, episode number eight. We got a big show planned for you guys. First of all, we're going to talk about our favorite jailbreak tweaks for the iPad and a lot of other goodies, too. Looking forward to the show. Sebastian, how are you doing? I'm, I wish I could say I'm good. I've got a terrible sore throat, but I'm going to power through this episode and we're going to make it. You know, I'm right there with you. I'm sipping on some, um, some tea right now, trying to get my voice together. So what's going on? What else is new? Um, not much, man. I had a good weekend with my wife. It was our anniversary and we went out uh, out of town. Actually, we went out of town to go to town. We went to spend the weekend in San Diego, which is the big city ne- right ne- next to us. Right. Without the baby, um, that was great. We had some good food and uh, went to see a baseball game and had some cocktails and just relaxed by the pool. That was great. Awesome. This is year number two, right? Year number two, going on three. Um, so today I'd like to talk about iPad tweaks. You know, we've been focusing a lot on jailbreak, on, uh, jailbreak tweaks for iPhone. And uh, obviously, there's more tweaks for iPhone coming out. And sometimes some of them work for both the iPhone and the iPad. Um, but we've had a lot of questions from people saying, hey, you talk a lot about jailbreak tweaks for iPhone. Can you talk about what you use on your iPad? Um, I know a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, we did a post with the best jailbreak tweaks uh, for iPad. Um, and uh, I know you opened my eyes about a, a tweak that I didn't use at the time on my iPad and that I have installed uh, since. Um, but I just wanted us to, to talk about what you use, what I use, and um, how we use it and why we like it. And uh, yeah. So do, 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 you, do you have a lot of jailbreak tweaks on your iPad? You know, I'm going to check this right now. Um, let me unlock my device. For some reason, I I don't feel the need as much as I do on my iPhone to have a jailbreak tweaks on my iPad. Right. I don't. Well, I just don't use my iPad as much. Yeah. As I... See if if tomorrow, for example, I had to restore my iPad Mini to six point one point three, and I was out of i uh, out of jailbreak for a while, I would I would be fine with it. You know, that would kind of bug me a little bit, but I would be fine. Whereas if that happened on my iPhone, I'd be miserable. <laughs> yeah, I, I use quite a few, actually. I'm just yeah? going down the list. Um, yeah, I use quite a few tweaks on my iPad mini. Um, one tweak that it's always at the top of my list when it comes to the iPad is Blue Troll. What do you do with that? I play games with it. Um, it allows you to map controls from like a, a PlayStation 3 controller mm-hmm. directly to the iPad. So if you have a okay. game that you want to play with the PS3 controller, you can do that with Blue Troll. It also works with the iK. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. You know, and this, uh, it's, this tweak is also uh, iPhone compatible, but it's obviously, you know, games generally look better, play better on the iPad. So that's definitely uh, at the top of the list as far as jailbreak tweaks are concerned on the iPad. Yeah. What about swipe selection? I use that too. That's... You know, that's a staple on both devices. Uh, yeah, I know. That's the one you turned me on to. Oh, you didn't know about that before? Well, I, I knew about the tweak, but um, I guess I, you know, I just skipped it when it came out. I was like, I probably don't need this, and I forgot about it. And then when, you're, um, when you came up with your um, best jailbreak tweaks for iPad, I was like, yeah, I need to check this out because this is very useful. And, and sure enough, I have it on both my iPhone and my iPad. Right. And uh, yeah, it makes... It makes using the keyboard so much better. Uh, no matter how you look at it, the keyboard on iOS or on any touch screen, I would say probably, is just if you're going to type more than you know a text message, if you're going to type an email or a letter or something like this, it's kind of cumbersome. You know, to, if, you, if, if you mistype something and you have to go back, you have to put your finger on the screen and aim like perfectly where you want the cursor to be it's not very convenient or or, or practical um and swipe selection make makes the whole process so much easier you can just swipe the cursor uh, left and right up and down um allows you to select text much more easily than you would um, normally on a stock ios can can you do up and down Uh, i believe you can no 
Uh, hold on, no, 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 no. When I say up and down, I'm thinking like, for example, if I want to go up, I'm going to swipe left, left, left until oh, I move yeah. up the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to go up and down, up and down. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, so, yeah, that's something that I uh, use, I would say, probably every day. You know, so like I, in some way or another, you know, I'm typing a text message on my phone and I made a typo and I have to go back. I swipe all the way back and it's so convenient. Especially and, uh, with one handed, like one use, one handed yeah. usage. It's perfect. Yeah. And uh, that's that's a tweak I would gladly pay for, um, but it's, it's free. So I don't even yeah. have to pay for it. Um, so to anyone who hasn't given it a try, either for iPhone or for iPad, um, check it out, really. It's called Swipe Selection, and I think it's in the Big Boss repo. Yeah, one of the best tweaks of all time. Yeah, definitely. Easily. Definitely. Yeah. What else do you have on your iPad? What else do I have on my iPad? Um, again, it's sort of like the whole, I mean, I'm running both on both mm-hmm. the iPhone and the iPad, but Password Pilot, yep. I absolutely must have this. Like, mm-hmm. if that is probably use more than any other jailbreak tweak really when you think about it i mean i'm always installing new apps from the app store yep. and i don't have to put my password in every single time yeah i'm right there with you i use it on my iphone and my ipad as well so for those people who don't know what it is basically you just enter your itunes password in the settings of the um, of the app and uh, of the tweak and you don't have to enter your password ever again for iTunes. So every time you're going to go to um, the App Store, for example, or iTunes to download some music or anything, um, iTunes is going to ask you for your password. And uh, with Password Pilot, your password is going to filled in is going to be filled in automatically. So you just have have to type OK, and that's it. So you don't have to type your password. So what else do you have on your iPad? Um, I've got another tweak from Filippo Bigarella. I've got Spring to my two. Do you use this one? Um. I used to. For some reason, I don't have it installed anymore. I'm not sure why, but I just don't. Okay. I use it to um, customize a little bit the look and feel of my uh, home, sc- home screen. I What I do is I shrink down the icons to 95%, I believe. So I make them a little smaller. And I also remove the icon lab- icon and folder labels. So you don't have the the, 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 the name of the icon or the folder so it, it gives me like a very clean home screen, which is the way I like it, clean and simple. Uh, that's what I do with it. That's interesting because one reason I, I stopped doing that, especially with the labels, is it hindered my ability to identify the app. Sort of like your whole thing with OXO. Uh-huh. The uh, app icon not being big enough in OXO. Well, it's the same thing here. I just... I mean, I see the icon, I know the app, but it takes me like another extra second to recognize what it is, and that's why I keep the labels there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never had this problem. Um, definitely not on the iPad. I do the same thing with my iPhone. I remove the the labels for for the app icons. Um, it looks good. I, I like it, the look. It looks yeah, nice. yeah, it does. But recently, I kind of rearranged my uh, my uh, screen on my iPhone, and what I did is that I moved every folder to the second page and I added the folder labels again. So for example, I've got a folder called uh, social. And before it was kind of a hit hit or miss, you know, I kind of knew where the social folder was on the home screen, but it wasn't always obvious. So sometimes I would just uh, select the wrong one. So when I added the labels again, on the iPad, I don't have this problem because even the the folder icons are much bigger, you know, and I see the nine icons in there, the nine preview icons of what's in, inside the folder. And um, I, don't, I, I never really had a problem with um, ident- identifying what's in there or what folder or what icon it is. Right, yeah. Okay, well, another tweak I really like is Emblem. And that's, uh-huh. um, I think that's, is that Joshua Tucker and another... That's definitely a concept from Josh Tucker, and I can't remember the name of the dev. Yeah, but basically what this does is it gives you OS ten inspired notifications mm-hmm. uh, for the iPad. I think it's Kyle Howes. I never can say that name right. Kyle Howes. But it's it's a really awesome tweet. You get the little you know slide in from the upper right hand corner of the screen notifications instead of the ugly banners mm-hmm. on the iPad. Yeah, I don't use this one. I don't. I don't have uh, too much problem with notifications, so 
Yeah. Uh, but, but it's a beautiful, t- uh, beautiful uh, tweak too. Huh? Yeah. It looks good. It looks good. And right on that note, um, there's another tweak called Mountain Center. Yep. And what this does is it places Notification Center just like on OS X on the right side of the screen. Mm-hmm. I really like this because I hate the way that the uh, Notification Center looks like on the iPad. It's like just sort of it's an awkward. afterthought. Yeah. It's very awkward. It's just taking up you know a little portion of the screen right in the middle of your device. Especially it looks awkward in um, landscape mode. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I have to agree with that. So this places your uh, notification center on the right side. So you just swipe from the right side of your screen on your iPad, and there's a notification center. I should give this a try. Two ninety nine on City's Big Boss. Ooh, Rebo. not cheap, eh? Not but, cheap. Uh, but I, I should give it a try because, like you said, I, I don't really like the way notification center looks on the iPad, and. Uh, I, you know, I never really realized that until now. I don't really like it, but I'm sure we can make it look better. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at my list here. Uh, I have a tweet called Fake Time Warner. And it's something, that's something I was going to mention a little later in the, um, in the sleeper tweak section of the podcast. Um, I was uh, going to talk about XCon. Um, but since we're talking about this, I'm going to mention it right now. So fake time Warner basically um, tricks whatever applications into thinking that your device is not jailbroken. So why would you need this? Um, I, my cable company is Time Warner Cable, and they have this application that lets you uh, watch cable directly from your iPad. Um, however, if you're jailbroken, the, when you launch the application, it's going to tell you that it has uh, found out that your device is jailbroken and uh, it won't let you play um, any and watch or stream anything. So you're out of luck. Um, so with tweaks like Fake Time Warner or XCon, which is a, a broader tweak, uh, you can actually fake uh, any fake the fact. I guess, hide the fact that you are jailbroken um, in the eyes of any application. So if you're using um, uh, any, like Dish, for example, I think uh, Dish Satellite, uh, I think they have the same thing. If you're jailbroken, they won't let you um, uh, stream anything. Um, So download XCon, and that should solve your problem. So what, I mean, kind of explain to me the reason why they block jailbreak users I don't in the know. first place because it's uh, not just, like you can do anything illegal or yeah i just think um just in case just in case exactly they're probably not really aware of what you can gonna do with jailbroken iphone and uh, and i think they're like just in case we're gonna block these guys just to make sure so we don't have to for, you know so we don't have to stay in, in touch with the jailbreak um stuff and figure out if at some point they can or cannot uh, record, for example, a show or something. I think or, actually I you can. <laughs> I mean, there was, I mean, I, there was a it, tweak not too long ago that let you do something like that. It kind of record streaming, but it was it only it was basically a sort of like a DVR. It didn't actually let you record per se or or transmit the files that you that you record. It was only for your local device. So it's more DVR like functionality. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. I mean, I use Fake Time Warner, and uh, I could be using XCon. It's it's the exact same thing. Um, I believe Fake Time Warner um, is just for Time Warner cable. So again, if you have a different uh, cable provider, um, give XCon a, tr- uh, a try because I know it covers for sure different providers, um, both cable and satellite. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, I got a couple Chrome. Uh, specific tweaks. I have opening Chrome and I have Nitrous. Um, opening Chrome, basically, um, how can I describe this? It lets you open any web link in Chrome automatically. It's going to basically overwrite. It makes Chrome def- your default browser. It makes from your default broad. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm having such a hard time, man, today for so simple, <laughs> such simple words. Um, yeah, so it, it makes from your default browser. Let's say you are in Twitter, for example, on the Twitter app, and you click on a link and you want to open it in Safari. 
um, where it's going to open it directly in Chrome. Right. Um, so you technically wouldn't have to deal with Safari ever again. That's what the tweak does. And I think there's a couple of different tweaks that do the same thing, but the one I use is called Open in Chrome. Um, another tweak I use for Chrome is called Nitrous, which uh, basically unleashes the, the Nitro JavaScript engine, which is normally um, just for Apple apps such as Safari and I believe iBooks. Um, and uh, the Chrome for iOS is handicapped because it can't take advantage of this. So Nitrous, which is a paid for tweak, you have to pay, I think it's 99 cents something, um, can unlock this feature uh, so you can take full advantage of, uh, so you can get take Chrome to four speeds on iOS. Yeah, I highly recommend that if you're going to yeah. use Chrome, yeah. I've been debating uh, lately if I should go back to Safari or not, actually. I have been using Safari pretty much. I was on a major Chrome kick for a while, but I've started recently. I go back and forth between the two. It's so hard because some, you know, some parts of Safari are, are superior, some parts of Chrome are yeah. superior. So it's kind of like this balancing act, trying to find out which one is the best for me. Hopefully I'll figure that out one day. <laughs> Soul searching. <laughs> uh. um, what else do you have? Do you have anything else on your iPad? Uh, I know you have something else. You have to have this one. Yeah, I have Zephyr. Oh, you have course. Zephyr. Right? I don't even want to mention that. I mean, that's oh, okay. that's guaranteed. That goes without saying. Yeah, it it should come like once you jailbreak your iP <laughs> iPhone or iPad, it should be like automatically installed. Yeah. Right. That and iFile and, you know, just the staples. It's not even... I've talked about those until my head turns blue, practically. Um, I have Skip Lock, obviously, my favorite um, iPad tweak by Filippo Bigarello, which, you know, bypasses the lock screen altogether. We've talked about that before. Yeah. That not long ago. Um, and I think that's it. I think so, too. I mean, there's obviously some more, more out there. Read the post on IDB, uh, Best Jailbreak Tweaks for the iPad. Uh, we'll have it in the uh, the show notes. Yeah, and obviously, as always, you know, this this list could be endless. You know, what we consider the best, what's best for me, might not be what's best for you, right? You know, if I, uh, for example, if I was opening Chrome and I consider this one of the best, what well, if you don't use Chrome? Obviously, it's not going to be one of the best for you. Yeah. Um, so, so we always have people commenting saying, "What about this tweak? What about this tweak?" Uh, yeah, I understand. It's a great tweak and everything, um, but you know, to each his own, basically. Yeah. We all have different tastes, so different, um, different favorites. Let's talk about this week's tweaks. A lot of activity this week. Well, the big one. <laughs> Message box. Message box. Chat when, heads on iOS. Yeah, so basically this tweak enables chat heads at the you know system level like everywhere on ios not just within the facebook app but you can access them outside of the facebook app what do you think um i'm not i mean it goes back to the same problem i'm not a big facebook user um so from a from a user standpoint um uh, i'd be like this is not for me um now as a jailbreak lover, um, amateur um, standpoint, I think this is great. I love that Adam came up with this tweak a week or two before, after um, face, Facebook heads and uh, chat heads were released, you know, or at least until the app um, in iOS came up. Um, so I think it's a great, um, it's a great thing that Adam did here. Technically speaking, it's, it's, it's just great. I love this. And that's why I love the jailbreak community because, you know, Facebook releases this thing and people are like, oh, I wish we could have this on our iPhone or, you know, all, all, all around the place. And a jailbreak dev comes up and makes it happen. And, and this, is, this is exactly the reason why I jailbreak. So I can get things on my iPhone or iPad that I'm not allowed to have in the first place. Yeah, it's a very impressive tweak. I'm not a huge Facebook user either. Um, I can probably count on one hand how many times I've used Facebook in the last year. But 
that being said, this is a super impressive tweak. And mm -hmm. if you do use Facebook, you'll love it. Yeah, so basically, what what does it do? I mean, can you explain really quickly, like, how it works and everything? It basically just puts a little, the, like, when you're having a conversation on Facebook chat, or I guess in Facebook Messenger, I guess is what they call it, um, it allows you to view the head or a picture or photo of the person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And this picture is available in the Facebook app and you can kind of move it around the app. But what message box allows you to do is to take those pictures, those what they call chat heads outside of the app. So you can even access them within other apps. So it's just like the way it is on um, Facebook home for, uh, for yes. For Android, not exactly the same because you're missing some key features like SMS integration and you know some other little. Yeah, but the, I'm, I'm talking the chat heads display. It's, right. Yeah. It's, it's the same. Yeah. Right. For the most part, it's it's pretty similar. So from from what I understand, the way message box works is it's running the Facebook app at all time on your device, and when you see a chat head popping up. Um, Technically, the Facebook app is running on your device. It's just being hidden. So you just, everything is hidden except the chat head. Is that correct? Yes, pretty much. That's how okay. I understand it. Yeah, so yeah. good tweak. Uh, it's free on Cydia's Big Plus repo. Check it out. Even if you don't use Facebook, check it out just to see how cool it is. Uh, what else do we have this week? This, I mean, uh, obviously this one was the biggest, the biggest tweak of the week. Um, but we have a few more uh, tweaks. We get Accentify, uh, which lets you choose the, or I, I guess replace, it lets you replace the Chrome um, color or Chrome feel that is uh, all around iOS. Yeah, so for the stock apps, for instance, like uh, the settings app, you know, at the top you have the, the Chrome, which they mm -hmm. call it, it's basically like the, the and when, when, when the we app. say Chrome, we say the Chrome color it has nothing to do with the web browser, by the way. Yeah, it's basically like the, I, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to describe it. I'm sure there's some other technical term that a developer could come up with, but it's like the outline of the app. It's like a theme for your like stock apps, like, you know, mail or, you know, a calendar or stuff like that. And it gives it these really nice looking colors. Um, these these colors are just very vibrant. It's like the most some of the most vibrant colors I've seen. I like the blue. I do too. Yeah, and they're it's a really nice tweak. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we have an interesting one: Platinum, which uh, helps you complete search queries in mobile Safari um, by basically giving you um, search suggestions. Right, that's what it does. Not really search suggestions because you already get that with Safari. What this does is uh, it has a little blue button on the right side so that you can hit that button and place the suggestions that are in there into your search bar without executing the search. Does that make sense? Sort of like Google Chrome does that. It allows you to like, or right, you can type in a part of the search, but you don't have to actually search on it yet until you get the query completed. Oh, got it. I missed I missed the whole point of this then until now. Yeah, so it's hard to explain, but if you look at the post. Yeah, now I get it. Okay. It makes more sense. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I like it. And it's free, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I I, I definitely need to give this a try then. Uh, another one, Prime, that you reviewed last year, or last week, sorry. Yeah, Prime is a, a tweak that is really nice. It, it's named Prime because it has the like the primary colors. Mm -hmm. I guess red, green, and what is the other one? Blue. Blue. <laughs> you can tell I slept through art class. Um, it allows you to easily identify your incoming, outgoing, and missed calls by color coding them. Yeah, because by default it's all black, right? Well, everything oh, no, there, but your no, missed no, calls. The, the missed calls are red. Right. Missed calls are red, but the uh, incoming and outgoing are black, which makes it hard to... And I've, I've actually ran into this in real world, you know, real world scenario. Like I couldn't identify, or oh, did I make that call? Did I receive that call? But this makes it easy uh, to identify by just color coding them. We have a pretty big tweak um, called camera tweak 
HD, um, which uh, supercharges the iPad stock camera app uh, by bringing a bunch of new features that you would normally find on some apps in the App Store. Um, I mean, you reviewed this week, uh, last week, Jeff. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Well, it's a, like the sequel of sorts to Camera Tweak, which is originally on the iPhone only. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, it basically turns your camera into like a full-fledged, like real robust app that you would find on the App Store. So that's that's when when I when I saw the, the the tweak on Celia and I understood what it was about and then I I watched your um your your video review and my first thought was why not release this on the App Store? I mean, there's plenty of uh, of similar applications in the in the App Store. I don't know for iPad, but for iPhone, I mean, there's like tons of them. Um, I can think about Camera Press from the top of my head because that's the one I use. Um, but it looks like that's something that would have better place in the App Store, no? Oh, maybe, but I mean, that that's pretty much a well cornered market. And maybe these, the developer was thinking that, you know, some people don't want it. They want to keep their phones as simple as possible. And this way you get to roll with the stock app and still reap the benefits of having all those extra features. Yeah, I get it. Um, this one is 99 cents, right? That's a steal. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there seems to be a lot of work. There's so many features in this app, and it's so well designed that it's really shocking that they only charge 99 cents. It's worth yeah. it. Um, no, I wouldn't need to use my iPad to uh, take pictures. <laughs> That's the only thing, though. It's kind of goofy <laughs> taking pictures with your iPad. That's why I was kind of surprised when I saw it uh, yeah. come out for the i. Yeah, yeah. looking at the comments, it's, it, it seems that there's a few people who use the iPad to take pictures. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not being, I'm not against using the iPad to take pictures, obviously. Yeah, no. Uh, but man, I've been to concerts before, and. <laughs> I remember the last concert I saw, I think it was uh, Imagine Dragons. Yeah. And there was this guy right in front of me, like with his full size iPad, like taking videos and photos of the of the concert in action. I was Instead like, of oh, watching man. it, like watch the concert. You're, you're watch right the there. concert or take a quick picture with your iPhone. You don't or whatever smartphone you have. You don't have to bring the full iPad over here. I don't understand you know? it. Like people watching their the concerts through their phones, the entire concert. Yeah, I'll, I'll never understand it. Yeah, I, I think the yeah, I think I've I've seen something. Uh, the yeah, yeah, yeahs had a little um, sign at the entrance of uh, one of the shows they were doing, saying "Keep your, keep your, keep your phone. Stop looking. Stop watching the concert for your phone. Keep it in your pocket and enjoy the show." Basically. Oh yeah, well that's. I mean, there's so many people. I mean, I'm guilty too. You know, I always take a couple of pictures, of, but. I try not to watch the whole show for the one phone. picture, one or two pictures is okay, but just don't. Like I've seen people at concerts, literally the entire concert, their battery dies. I mean, they're just sitting there recording. Yeah, and what are you gonna do? I mean, are put you put it on YouTube? I mean, yeah, you're, and you're gonna watch it again later on. Maybe like, they're doing it. Like, wow. Maybe they're doing it for their friends. Who knows? I don't know. They couldn't be there or something. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, I'm I'm not gonna try not to judge too much. <laughs> All right, last, um, last but not least for this week's tweaks, we've got a tweak that you just reviewed, um, we checked out and posted about a few minutes ago on I download blog, and it's called Lock Screen Toggles. And, um, Same like developer as a Camera Tweak, actually, which oh, is yeah? ironic, yeah. Okay. Well, like the name suggests, what Lock Screen Toggles do, it brings um, toggles directly uh, to your lock screen, and uh, to access this toggle, something that I've thought about before is you just swipe the clock to the left. Is that correct? Yes. To reveal the, the toggles. And you, you have like, the usual suspects, you know, like the flashlight, the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi, the wrist spring, uh, location services, the airplane mode, obviously. And, and you can rearrange them as you see fit. Um, Actually, just before just before we started recording this podcast, I was uh, in the process of uh, checking it out in the studio and downloading it, um, but I didn't get time. Um, it's I think it's a dial, I believe, um, but this one is definitely 
gonna end up on my uh, on my iPhone. Um, do, do you like it? Yes. What, what do you think? Nice looking tweak. Very. It's it has that like uh, NC settings feel. Yeah. But right there on the lock screen and available with just a quick swipe from the um, clock. Yeah. I remember mentioning something like this a while ago, a few weeks or a few months ago, and I believe it was on, on we posted about a, a concept by Sentry, the, the guy behind OXO. And, uh, and on, I posted a comment on, on the post we published on IDB, and I said, well, what if we did this, you know, like swipe the clock to reveal the icons? I think I remember that comment. And Sentry was like, well, actually, I thought about it, but it, it is too obvious. And I didn't comment back, but I was thinking, well, obvious is good. You want to make it obvious. You know, you don't want to make it complicated. You won't want to have people think about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but I'm glad someone came up with this because that's something I've been thinking about before. And, uh, and usually when I, when I want to access my toggles, I'm not always, you know, in the phone. I, my phone might be here on the table. And I don't, you know, if you can save me a swipe to unlock and pull down the, the NC settings, that's perfect, man. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. And I like so, the fact that you can quickly rearrange the toggles. Yeah. Right yeah. There. Yeah. So I will definitely, uh, I would gladly pay a DAO for this tweak um, as soon as we're done with this podcast for sure. Yeah. And I think that wraps it up for um, this week's tweaks. Yes, it does. Um, I just wanted to go over like a, a couple, a few f more things, a um, few more tweaks that we talked about on IDB this week, um, uh, smaller tweaks that I'm going to mention, um, just for historical purposes. Um, we've got, uh, I think it's called FB chat heads, which uh, allows you to bypass the Facebook chat heads limit on iOS. Um, uh, by default, you're limited to uh, five chat heads on iOS, and this tweak allows you to um, have unlimited chat heads. So it's a chat head overdose. Um, we've got pull all, which adds a pull to refresh to every web view. Uh, we have a cloud lover, which one lets you uh, quickly access synced iCloud tabs on your iPhone. Uh, so basically, it's a little shortcut to uh, your um, your iCloud tabs on, in Safari. Uh, a, call, a tweet called Remote Tweet, which like, lets you share the remote apps now playing track. And uh, that's about it. So. Nice roundup. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at my screen right now to see if I forgot something. Um, Adam is on Cydia now. It's official. It's out. Your new favorite tweet. <laughs> Go get it. It's Adam, and it's um, available right now from... Big Bus Repo. Yep, and Shurnix, and... Um, let me Tyler, just, Tyler Nettleton. Nettleton. Yes, I got it right. Yeah, it's it's two dials, and uh, it's it's a good-looking tweak, but if you don't want to spend two dials, you can always check out Jelly Lock, which I'm actually using on my iPhone. And uh, I think that wraps it up for the tweaks. Think so, yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Oh man, yeah, I know what we have. I know we have like, have you? Uh, I'm talking about the byte SMS thing, the text heads. Yeah. What a letdown, man! It was ex just an extreme letdown. I was so disappointed. I was, I was excited when they started like hyping it up. And um, like our friend Oliver said, they actually never said they would release, release some kind of chat heads for Byte SMS. You know, they never said this clearly or, you know. And so we can't really, really be disappointed at all. Well, I, I think you can because obviously you're playing off the um, anticipation of the Facebook chat heads. And, yeah. And you announce this like right when Facebook, you know, drops their, or right yeah. when um, the uh, jailbreak tweak for the Facebook chat heads comes message box. Yeah, the, the way and the timeline <laughs> and how it was it was hyped, to me, I mean, there was no doubt it was going right. to be some chat heads, some sort of chat head implementation for, for bad SMS. And uh, um, when yesterday they finally said, hey, this is what we have, <laughs> which is, what is it, like a notification center widget with pictures of your contacts? 
And that's already kind of been done before. I mean, yeah, not technically before. in Byte SMS, obviously, but yeah. there's been shortcuts where you could text your friends from your uh, notification center with pictures, yeah. I believe. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has nothing to do with chat heads or text heads or um, anything else related to uh, Facebook chat heads. And I believe uh, this morning I was browsing through the Twitter stream of uh, Byte SMS. And um, I think the guys said that they're going to change the name from talk heads to something else because people are confused. I think a lot of people are pissed. Yeah, they call them uh, text heads. That's yeah, I think they're going to change the name, though, to stop the confusion. <laughs> oh, man. That oh, was well. interesting. <laughs> oh, well. When I saw that last night, you texted me. And I was in bed. And I'm like, I'm not getting up for this. <laughs> I did. I did anyway. But oh well. Um. And what else do we have? Let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll have something I want to talk about. I don't know if you wanted to about? bring it up or anything, but I, wanna... I bring it. I I was gonna bring it up, but oh. since you're bringing it up first, <laughs> might as well go. Well, for why it. don't you bring it up? Ask um, the question. Ah. Do you want me to, to to ask like the uh, the question that goes around the the the, mo the main point or yeah? You know, ask the question that goes around. What do you hear? Uh, well, I I hear a lot of people say comments about your videos and say, you know, like the the way you do videos now. You have the screen of the iPhone embedded in, in into the frame of an iPhone with a beautiful blurred background. Uh, I mean, it's beautiful. And I know it's beautiful because I, I actually I suggested you, you. I don't know if you remember. Yes. I suggested you started doing this like a, a few weeks ago. I said, "Hey, why don't you try to do this? I think it looks beautiful." And this was like, I mean, we talked about this like a year ago, but I never did it because I could never get it looking the way the right way. But yeah. then maybe was it four months ago or so? You showed me an idea of a, a better way to do it. And I kind of ran with that idea. Yeah, and, and a couple of hours later, you, come, you came up with a proof of concept. I was quite impressed, actually. You made it sound like it was going to be super hard. And like five minutes later, you come back and say, hey, look at this. What do you think? And yeah. that was exactly what I was thinking. Well, and there was a couple of tweaks, to, you know, a couple of things to change here and there. But that was just as close to perfect as possible for a first draft. Right. So, so a lot of people are asking us, hey, how do you do this? And... Yeah, we yeah. get a lot, you know, and there are a lot of people that complained at first about the fact that I switch videos from, yeah. you know, having my hands in the frame and demonstrating it like with a camera as opposed to doing like a screen, you know, screen grab. Yeah, people don't like change. That's why, you know, like people right. don't like change in general. And I can understand that. Um, I think a lot have warmed up to the idea, though. Yeah, but that's great because you you you, you stuck to it. And, you know, instead of backing backing down and say, oh, "Okay, guys, you know, everybody's a lot of people are, don't like it. I'm going to go back to the old format." You 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 stuck with it, and without wanting to you know to scratch your back a little too much, uh, you know, like you kind of set a new standard for videos of uh, jailbreak week reviews on YouTube. And now I see more and more people coming up and basically ripping off your, 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 your format and doing the same thing as you do. So, you know, like the no hands, uh, the background and the frame of the iPhone with a video inside the iPhone. Um, and uh, I, I think you must be pretty frustrated. And uh, I mean, you didn't, you know, like you didn't come up with a whole concept of a video in an iPhone. Right. I mean, you know, like you, you didn't invent this. Right. And you didn't, you certainly didn't trademark it. But there's still, I don't, I don't know. How do you feel about that? Well, it, it's a long story because first of all, I started doing videos the way with just the camera. Yeah. Uh, and that was a big change. Like everyone was doing their stuff like with a display recorder. You yeah, remember that? Like when oh, yeah. when iOS videos, jailbreak videos first started, any kind of video with the iPhone, no one actually recorded their their iPhone. It was that's too true. inconvenient. But then then eventually that's what everyone started doing. Um, and I'm not saying I'm trying to take credit for that, but I think we did have some influence on on that on that happening. And then we switch over to um, you know the screenshots. <laughs> It's a, I think it's a better format for seeing what 
what is there. It has some downsides, but I think the uh, pluses outweigh the, the downsides. And now no. we're seeing, you know, we're seeing people like completely taking that idea, not not just like taking it and putting their own twist on it, but basically just a one to one you know, copy. And it's it's frustrating. You know, I'm not saying that I, I took I'm the one that created this because I wasn't. I mean, but if you're in the same realm, like doing jailbreak videos, why wouldn't you want to put your own? stamp on it i hear you man i hear you so it's just frustrating it's not so much that i'm you know mad because oh he's taking my the way i do it it's just like you want other people to inspire you to do better work so if everyone's doing the same thing what you know what is there to look to you know to what where's the motivation to get better yeah you're just basically <laughs> running in circle and yeah. there's no um, creative process or anything yeah so that's just disappointing overall you know i mean i, I won't everybody to prosper and you know do well but do your own thing don't don't let it get to you too much jeff no it's it's not i mean it and is frustrating but I, you know i see the big picture so people i think people know that you kind of came up first and again you're you know like you didn't invent it like i want to make this clear you didn't invent this format you didn't come up with it but in this niche in this jailbreak community and just break scene thing you're the one who came up with it and stuck to it for a long time, you know, like you, you just you don't do one video every once in a while. Uh, you've been you've started doing it a few weeks ago and it's been consistent every week. Every it's video been, was it's been months. Fun. Actually. Yeah, it, it's been like two, three months or something. Maybe three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I think people are uh, people 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 know that, you know, you came up with that and uh, you're the one and and other people are are just, you know, trying I'm not saying to copy, but to do the same thing as you do, basically. Right. Um, and, and it's not so much that I'm mad. I mean, it's not, that's not it. It's just that we, you know, the community that we're serving, the readers, they deserve better. That's so, true. So do better for your readers and your viewers. And, you know, you're, you're going to be able to do better things, do greater things. Um, if you, you know, you're just a, original. I'm not saying you can't be inspired by somebody because... Everyone knows that. I mean, there's plenty of video, you know, iPhone video people before I started. And a lot of them helped me and still do to this day. But just put your own spin on it. And we've all been guilty of imitating others, you know, Absolutely. myself included. I'm not going to sit here and say that I've never tried to copy someone's formula for success. Because I have. We, I think we all have. But eventually you learn that that doesn't work. You have to do your own thing. Um, because the circumstances surrounding their success, it's never going to be repeated. It's just, they was there in the right place at the right time and things worked out. So do you. That's, uh, some wise words here. All right. <laughs> let's wrap it up with, with this mini, mini rant here. I think, I think we got the message across and, um, and I still have love of, for At the end of the day, yeah. it's flattering. Yeah. At the end is. of the day, you know, it's flattering when people try to emulate what you're doing. So, yeah, that's the way we should we should you know. I hope I didn't sound this. too like pretentious or like I'm trying to make myself something I'm not because that's not the case at all. No, I don't think you sounded pretentious. And and again, like you, we admit that you didn't come up with the whole concept, you know. Yeah. But. Who we have to say that you're the one we that made it kind of a not a standard but something uh, recurring and um, some I mean a trademark basically for jailbreak videos. Right. So let's leave it at that. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah, and we don't have any issues with anybody in particular. Let's just no. move on and. That's right. So right, let's let's move on to uh, a few Q and A's from. Uh, some of our loyal readers. I've got one here from, uh, what's his name? Steven Miller. Steven is asking, is there such a thing as too many tweaks? It's, it almost sounds like a, uh, a philosoph philosophical <laughs> question. You know, is there, is there such a thing as too many tweaks? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. I would think so too, but that's because I'm a minimalist and I like to have the least amount of stuff on anything, you know, especially my iPhone. Um, 
if you have too many tweaks, it's only a matter of time before there's going to be a, con- a yeah. conflict that causes an issue. Yep, exactly. It's only a matter of time. Exactly. Well, basically, let's put it this way. If you have a badge with 10 little uh, app updates every day on Cydia, that's probably you have too many tweaks here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, it's, you know, to each his own. If, if, if a lot of tweaks works for you and um, if it doesn't cause any problem on your device, why not? You know, why not? Right. Um, I got a tweak from uh, Mark Taggart. He asks, Velox looks cool, but can't I just open the app? Am I missing something? What is the benefit? I mean, you've been beta, beta testing um, Velox a little bit, Jeff. And what do you think? I mean, yes, the first, the first thing that comes to mind when, is like, well, I can just open the app and, and do this inside the app. So why would I need Velox? I think he might be missing some of the benefits, though, because not only does it, you know, it allows you to see the notifications quickly, you know, with the swipe of the lock screen mm-hmm. app icon. Opening the app takes some time to load up. You have to go to the exact area within the app that shows the notifications. You know, there's a lot There's a lot more to it than that. And not only that, but there's also some additional functions like being able, to, for instance, on the uh, the mail app, compose a new mail or compose a new tweet or whatever. So it's more than just... I mean, it does a lot. <laughs> I can't really explain it more than that. If you watch the video, you can see it, it does like, yeah. like a whole bunch of different things with each different app. That's a good answer. We've got a question from Jack Willis, and uh, Jack is the lead developer behind OXO. Uh, he says, he asks, where do you see the iOS community in years' time, and how do you think it's, evol- it's going to evolve? So basically, uh, you know, What's the jailbreak community going to look like in a few years or even next year? Come back to I've, me after WWDC and I'll be able to tell you exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it's something it's so hard to tell because the jailbreak community is really, you know, like tied to how or what Apple releases every year, you know. So it's really hard to, to, to kind of predict or have an opinion about what's going to happen. You know, I think the jailbreak community is always going to be one step ahead of iOS, stock iOS, no matter what, because there's always going to be some people who want to be doing more than they're allowed to do with their device. Um, question from uh, Nikola Georgievich. Looks like nobody's talking about alternate installers anymore. For example, Lima. What happened to them? Alternate Cydia installers or alternate yeah. uh, Cydia uh, replacements? I, I, yeah, CDR replacement. He calls them uh, alternate installers. So yeah, like CDR replacements, basically. Because they just don't work. I mean. Yeah, exactly. That's why, and you'll probably never see one. I'm hoping that Cydia will get a fresh coat of paint and some new features, but it's by far the best. Yep. Uh, finally, final question, and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, question from Jake Januzelli. He says, who are some jailbreak developers that you admire? Um, Ryan Patrick. Yeah, exactly. That's the first name that comes to mind uh, every time um, I'm asking this question. Ryan is just uh, a very prolific uh, jailbreak dev, and he comes up always with this very simple um, and original and very useful tweaks. Usually they're free as well. And they're well documented. Uh, yep. Um, I can think about uh, Grand Pawn as well, uh, yeah. also known as uh, CH Pawn. Um, yeah, he is, uh, I mean, these, these two, I mean, this, they release such great quality tweaks, you know, like I, I never think twice about installing one of their tweaks because I know it's been thoroughly tested and, and the chances of um, conflicts or chances of crash crashes are just so many more that, um, I mean, I install this tweak without any second thoughts, really. Yeah. And there's some good up-and-comers, too. I mean, obviously you have staples like Filippo, Bigarella. And yep. Then, I mean, I'm, we're probably, I know we're forgetting a ton of developers. Um, even like themers like Surenix, designers, graphical designers. I, I consider, he's not technically a developer, I guess, but he's had probably just as much influence on jailbreaking as any other. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. 
I agree. And the, and the question was, you know, like the one we admire the most. Yeah. And, and obviously, we, you know, it's always the same names we're going to drop, you know. And uh, um, these guys have been there forever and they were one of the, some of the first. And, and uh, there's so many new, like, uh, up and comers and it's very exciting. But to be quite frank, I, I can hardly remember their names uh and i know like if they come up with several tweaks in a row or something like this eventually i'll be like oh yeah this guy is good i like him he does some awesome stuff um uh, but it, it just you know from the top of my head like this it's really hard to remember them all the people i admire are the ones who have you know a clear concise plan of what what the tweak is supposed to do they have great documentation and they've, you know, they thoroughly tested their app for compatibility and they don't rush out to stuff, just churning, you know, tweak releases just for the sake of doing so. Mm -hmm. So one person that comes to my mind is uh, Jack Willis, who we just mentioned uh, with also, and of yep. course his partner in Grimes Entry. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that wraps it up. Yeah, that was a, that was a doozy. What's a doozy? I was in, it was a lot, I guess. I don't know. That was a lot, yeah. yeah. That was a big one. But it was um, fun. As always. I feel a lot better. I feel like it was like a therapy session. <laughs> well, next week, you know, like, you can do this again. You can lay down on your couch. <laughs> and I'll be virtually uh, sitting behind you with my notepad taking notes. <laughs> Thank you, Sebastian. I feel a lot better now. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you you know like, got this off your chest, and and hopefully that makes you feel a little better, and you can you know stop worrying too much about it because again, it's not a big deal. At the end of the day, people know who's who's doing all this work and who's coming from, and and uh, I think the numbers speak for themselves too. You know, a word of uh, before saying goodbye. I just want to thank everyone for listening to the show. If you like it, please, please, please. Go to iTunes and write a little review and give us some good ratings because that helps us out a lot. And uh, you can uh, send us a tweet uh, with the Let's Talk Jailbreak hashtag. You can send us emails or you can leave comments on the site and, um, and we'll make sure to address any question, concern or comment you might have. Uh, any feedback is good feedback, even if you said you know bad things that gives us an opportunity to fix them. So... So please be vocal, let us know. Uh, let us know uh, if there's something you want us to talk about. Uh, let us know as well. We're open to suggestions. We actually love suggestions and feedback. So, um, so feel free to hit us up. And um, as for us, I think we'll be talking again next week. Yes, indeedy. All right. Well, you have a good day. I hope your uh, throat feels better. I know I'm going to go and relax for a minute and drink some water because I am so suffering right now. Take All care, right, man. man. See ya. All right, bye see bye. Ya later.